What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. So this is our LQ4 6 liter that we're going to be swapping into the blue crew cab. I've got it all put back together to the point that I can run it on the stand. The only thing I have left to do is get the wiring sorted out to power the PCM, the injectors, basically let the computer do its job. So I'm going to show you how to do that so you can do this anywhere. So obviously to make a fuel injected engine run, you need to supply it with fuel. For the time being, I have a temporary fuel pump set up. You need to supply the PCM with the correct voltage. You can just use your factory connectors, the factory PCM, but you need to remove the vehicle anti-theft security from it. And if you've made any changes to the engine, uh, for example, I've decapped the injectors. You need to make sure you give the computer that information so it can adjust its running conditions. If you've changed the camshaft, you'll need to adjust for the camshaft as well. Uh, like I said, any changes you've made to hard parts or components, you need to make sure you tell the computer about that so it's able to figure that out and, and run. Now the last thing that we need to do before this engine can be started is I need to get power supplied to the places that it needs to be and ground supplied to the places that it needs to be. And in order to do that, all you need is this one connector right here. This connector runs from the main harness on the engine, obviously, goes in and plugs into the bottom of the power distribution center. So we're here on the bench. There's a bunch of wires in here. Now, the only wires that you need in order to make it run on an engine stand like I'm going to, or even in a vehicle, are the orange wires, the pink wires, and the black wire. So let's start here. This black wire right here is a ground. You need to supply this wire to the same ground uh, as the engine. These orange wires are supposed to be 12 volt constant from the battery. So these would go directly to your battery positive post through a series of connections in the vehicle. In this case, since we're running it out of the stand, we're just gonna connect these directly to the positive or of the battery. And that brings us to all the pink wires. Now the pink wires have a variety of functions. They are keyed on power. What that means is when the key is in the on position, the run position, these all are powered up with 12 volts through either a relay or a switch or something. But they all get 12 volt battery power when you turn the key to the run position. Now, some of them also have 12 volt power in the start position. For example, the fuel injector feeds, the ignition coil feeds. For sake of starting it here on the engine stand, we're just, we're just gonna connect all of these wires to the battery positive as well. We'll twist them all together so they're all making good contact with each other, and then we're gonna connect them to our battery positive post. Everything else in this connector, the purples, the yellows, the greens, the gray, the blue, those wires, are for other functions. Uh, one runs the AC compressor. There's one in here that controls the fuel pump relay, the exciter wire for the starter, feed wire for the relay to the starter. None of those we need in this situation. All we really need is to give this black wire ground and the orange and the pink wires, we're just gonna twist all together so we can connect them on and off of the battery positive when we're ready to start it. Now all of these wires have a double lock. You'll see on the side there's these blue bars. And these are kind of the secondary lock. So you pull those out on the side that is solid, pull in that direction and they'll release and come out. Once you've done that, you can use a pick or if you have connector release tools, you can use those. But you just release the lock tab from this side to allow you to slide the connector out. I'm gonna pull out the wires that I need from the connector and leave the rest in place because that'll make it easy for me to decipher which wire is which later without having to go through and label all of them. All these other wires I'm going to use, I just don't need them right now. Now as I pull these wires out, I'm gonna label 
what they go to. So later when I'm installing in the truck and I'm wiring my relay panel, I know which wires need to be powered up together. I also know what size fuse needs to go for each circuit. Uh, if you need the pinout and need diagram, you need to know what each wire goes to based on its location. You can find that information on lt1swap.com. powers and ground out of the connector here. I've got my battery constant to the PCM run here with a ring terminal on the end. I've got my switched powers right here with a ring terminal on the end. And I've got my ground here with a ring terminal on the end. I basically just did a series of forks. I didn't have a connector big enough to fit all these pink wires. So I did a series of forks to get them all into one wire and I'll use that to hook them up. So I need to get this PCM adjusted, set up, ready to go the way I need it. Now, the first thing I did is I read the stock programming and I saved that file without making any changes to it. Now, the first thing I need to do before I buy the licensing and, and make any changes to this is I wanna make sure it has the operating system I'm going to need as an, op as an option. So I click the operating system button up here in the left, and it does have the ability to be changed to speed density three bar. So when the time comes, I know I'll be able to change this for the three bar uh, map sensor. I don't have a three bar map sensor yet. So for the time being, I'm just gonna run it on the stock operating system. The next thing I need to do is remove VATS, the anti-theft. So you go into the system tab, it opens your drop down window here. And you see right in the middle, it has security, that's control, serial. Now we don't need that, so we're gonna change it to none. Now, this is my personal preference, but before I go any further, then I save that as a separate file. So I leave the name the same, but I change it to that's deleted. And then I save. There we go. The next thing I need to do before I rewrite the PCM is change my injector flow rate. So under the engine tab, fuel, in general, I'm looking at flow rate versus KPA. Now I'm going to be running this using a vacuum referenced fuel pressure regulator. So I don't need to worry about the manifold vacuum. The fuel pressure is going to adjust based on manifold vacuum. So the flow rate will remain consistent. So I don't need to worry about whether there's five KPA or 80 KPA in the manifold. Now, if you remember from the other video, I found out that my injectors, my D-caps flow 77.14 pounds per hour on average. So I'm gonna go up here into this box. I'm gonna enter 77.14, and then I'm gonna hit equals. And that changes everything. So now I see that I have my injector flow rate put where it needs to be. Close that window. Close that window. I'm gonna save again. And this time I'm gonna add in. There we go. And then I'll save yet again. Now I can go ahead and write the PCM. So I'm gonna click write vehicle. I don't have a license yet. I need to purchase a license. It says right down here, purchase credits online. Now I purchased my two credits, so I need to resync the interface. You do that under the help tab. 
Now my two credits are added. Now I can go in, show the license options. I'm going to use two credits for this PCM. Yes, I'm sure. This is where it's very, very important or you're going to have a no start condition. You need to do right and tire. See, it pops up here that it says brickable. It is extremely, extremely important that you are not going to lose battery voltage, that your wires aren't going to get unplugged, that nothing could interfere with this while it's writing the entire PCM or it turns your PCM literally into a brick. It's just an aluminum block. So make sure there's not going to be any interruptions. Your battery's not going to die. Your computer's not going to go to sleep. Nothing like that is going to happen before you start this process. It takes five or six minutes. So now I click right. I like to make sure nothing's going to happen. So I just kind of spin my little cursor in circles to make sure the computer doesn't go to sleep while I'm doing this. And there we go. It says my write is completed. So now I close this and it's safe to turn off my bench harness, turn off the power and disconnect the PCM. And we can plug it in, power it up and it should start. So your PCM connectors, they only fit one way. You get those plugged back in. We've got our PCM all tuned up. Now, the only changes I made to this were to remove vats and adjust for the injector size because I put the decapped injectors in. It's gonna start up under the cold start programming. So that should add enough fuel and timing to overcome the cam. Later, when I can run the engine for a period of time, meaning it'll have coolant in it and everything else, uh, I'll be able to run it and I'll, I'll make the changes necessary for it to idle correctly at a warm idle with the camshaft in it. But under cold idle and on a cold startup, the computer should add enough fuel and timing that it'll overcome the, the difference in the cam change. So I'm gonna grab another battery, get my wiring hooked up, make sure that I have ground to the engine block, a good solid ground, and then we should be able to get this thing started. And let's try to make some noise. Well, that's a good sign. We've got power to the PCM. Okay, it should start.